right, guys, Chase Davis, Center Investigative Reporting. They decided to let the sick guy with the bad cough go first, so sorry about that in advance. Um, data, right? News organizations have more of that than they know what to do with because reporters for so, so long have been prolific collectors of this stuff. Um, as a reporter, you go through your life and you collect documents, you collect databases, you collect all this stuff, and you synthesize it and turn it into stories. The problem is that once we collect all of that data, we really kind of suck at, uh, at putting it to use beyond the story. We're very wasteful. Usually we run the story in the paper, the data ends up in a cardboard box, we throw it underneath our desk and we never look at it again, which is a damn shame. And the story itself usually runs and gets some attention for the first week or two, and then after that it's in the archives never to be heard from again. And that's really too bad. And if you've seen South Park, this is kind of a familiar problem. The underpants gnomes have a very similar problem to this. Step one, collect a bunch of stuff. Step two, we have no idea. And step three, profit, right? We're really, really good as journalists, number one. We suck at number two. And number three is an elusive goal we all hope to achieve, which is why today I am going to give you the gift of underpants. Um, an understanding of the data that we use and hopefully some inspiration for ways that you, some of you can apply your data science skills to solving some problems for us. It's actually about itches that I want to scratch, uh, ideas of journalism uh, and data science that I'm personally interested in. The first of them is creating value from public data, right? Campaign finance or transportation statistics or the census, all these things are things we use in reporting all the time, but companies use this stuff as well to actually solve real problems and create real value. And so I think we need to take a little bit of a page from some of the entrepreneurial side of this on the journalism side. We need to be able to take this data that we're using in reporting and turn it into products that actually are valuable to people. Like if we got some transportation statistics, for example, on flight delays, what we would do is we would turn that into a story, maybe a nice infographic talking about how much McCarran Airport sucks. Um, and then that would pretty much be the end of it. But if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to go through, you're going to take similar data to this, and you're going to mix it up with other types of flight delay data to make a predictive system called Flightcaster that actually predicts flight delays better than the, airpl uh, the airports themselves do. This is the kind of thing I think we need to be thinking about, is how do you take other types of public data and apply these types of methods to create real value, uh, which is an interesting problem to solve. Second thing is, what do we do about all the stuff we've already done, all the stories we've already written? You think about a news archive, and it's really like the collected history of a community, right? All the, the people, the places, the events, the time, and everything that, that really makes up a community can be captured in a lot of ways in a news archive. And so I've got to believe, and I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I have to believe there is a way to get that stuff out and turn it into something valuable. Because news organizations are just sitting on these things collecting dust, and there has to be something to that. At least I, I really kind of hope so. Some companies are playing around the edge of this, um, entity extraction stuff, uh, semantic analysis, some, some recommendation uh, software and things. But those are mostly focused on news that's going forward, not the stuff we already have in-house. But what can we do with some of that stuff that we already have? Experiment that I've started messing around with is taking the NPR API, trying to train a classifier to differentiate between evergreen stories, like how to carve a turkey, and time-sensitive stories, like either Flavor Flav or little procedural you know, things that don't really have as much value anymore. And, you know, making the first one, you know, bringing them back up and the second one not. Prediction is sort of Star Trek in all of this, but there was a study, I think it was Pew earlier on this week, that showed that uh, trends in positive news stories can actually presage uh, bumps in polling for presidential candidates. Is there other predictive stuff we can get out of this? Um, final thing, which is near and dear to my heart, is measuring impact. How do we actually measure the impact of the stuff that we do? And this is interesting because it sort of forces us to challenge our assumptions as journalists that we have an impact and the extent to which that impact sort of goes out into society. I think that starts with understanding our users better. Um, not all users are alike. If President Obama reads a story in the paper and is moved by it, he can probably do more about that than I can. Um, <coughs> sad to say. New York Times has started playing around with stuff like this. Some of you have probably seen this. It's a project called Cascade. And what they do is they measure tweets as they go through the Twitter sphere and see sort of the key influencers in the network, things like that, and sort of how a story goes through the social media life cycle. It's a very fascinating project. Another thing we could be doing, I think, is looking at our own work. And what's about to pop up on the screen is clusters of stories we've done at CIR that are clustered based on semantic characteristics that show sort of different narratives we created, like seismic safety, stuff like that. What you find looking at this is we're actually pretty good as journalists at predicting what, like putting resources into stuff that has an impact. And so being able to tell ourselves what is impactful and what's not. Lots of smart people in this room, um, pretty much all of them are here, and they are all smarter than me, and they are working on problems that are very, very similar to this. And so if you're sitting next to one, uh, you should first make fun of their picture, and then second, you should ask them about the kinds of things they're working on. These are just personal itches that I wanted to scratch. Uh, finally, that's about it. If you guys want to talk about smart things, talk to the other people. If you want to talk about underpants, come talk to me. Here's my email. Thank you. Thank you.